As a gamer, I bet you've been searching for a feeling recently. Surveying through the cosmos within your brain, you only find glimpses of it. You see a sliver of it there, making a world for the first time in Minecraft. There it is. Your first time defeating the Lich King atop Ice Crown Citadel. Maybe it's there when you were playing custom games with your friends in Halo Reach, or in your grind to get all the camos for the Scar in Modern Warfare 2. And it's there, dying 37 times with your best buds on Operation Metro and Battlefield 3. And you know it was there when you loaded up Skyrim for the first time. Whenever you think of these games, you may think of these moments, and just for a second, it's like you're right back in front of that cheap, bulky TV, having the time of your life again. In the moment, you didn't realize you would look back on that time so fondly, but as soon as you arrive at that vision, it vanishes in a blink, and there you are, back to reality, scrolling your phone mindlessly with your PC on the Steam homepage for hours. Back in the late 2000s and early 2010s, the golden standard of video games came from companies we label as AAA game studios. I swear this term was made just for the studios to make everyone believe that their game was better than the rest of the games on the market, but I'm not gonna hate, because at the time, they were. These studios were obsessed with developing the most creative and fun experiences to give to players, but also had the major backing of large companies. With so much resources and passion, these studios were expected to deliver. And boy did they. Instead of video games looking like this? Why does Fall Guys have a battle pass? They looked like this. It's Leroy! They were built for the player's enjoyment at the center focus, but as time went on, these studios were corrupted by greed and, and became tormented, twisted versions of themselves. They were transformed from a lovable toy into a money-sucking product. Amazing way to spend your night? Something contributing to your broken marriage. Mom, this will help me learn! I just spent our life savings on gems. Now these games are designed for maximum marketability and only to produce a profit. And now anytime you load up any of these AAA titles, the first thing you are greeted with is always a way for you to give up more money. Like a couple weeks ago, I just logged on to Destiny 2 after not playing for a couple years, and look what the f*** happened, bro. It's a tragedy what happened to these games. I mean, being the staples of the industry with the most financial backing, they are essentially the face for gaming. And I cannot imagine a worse way to represent the art that is video games. I loved you. But if this opinion on the state of large AAA titles is so popular, then that begs the question, why do we still play them? This question has pestered me the last couple of weeks, and it infuriated me. If I hate the state of these games so badly, then why in the world do I continue to force myself to play another ranked game of League or another match of Call of Duty? <laughs> While experiencing this frustration within the state of games I love to play, there was an idea nagging at me in the back of my mind. What if I gave non-AAA games a shot? But all my life, I have loved and nearly single-handedly only played AAA games. They were the face of gaming when I was a kid, so why would I not play these titles? They also have the most financial resources, so obviously these products were the best that gaming could offer, right? Like many others have, I associated money with quality, so I convinced myself that what I was experiencing was the best of the best, and pushed the thought of me playing anything other than the gaming staples out of my mind, and went and played a couple rounds of Halo. So I decided I would compromise and play a short indie game to see if they were really all hype or not. Eventually, I stumbled across a game that could be completed in around an hour and a half. So feeling satisfied with my search, I bought the game. Little did I know the reason that I, and I bet you, force yourself to play these games was all within this one game. This game was before your eyes. Before Your Eyes is an extremely creative premise where you continue on to the next scene in the game whenever you blink. You journey through the life of Benjamin Brin, where you make decisions or skip entirely through scenes by blinking. At first, this mechanic was hard to get used to. I would constantly lose vital story moments and unintentionally end scenes early when I accidentally blinked.
Throughout the story of Benjamin Brin's life, I experienced the hardships of growing up under the pressures of my parents' dreams and living the adult life of a struggling artist and the adversity that this life brings with it. My mom desperately wanted me to become a phenomenal piano player and ruthlessly pushed me to a breaking point when I couldn't handle the pressure. I experienced love and loss, fear and happiness. But one day, as an 11 year old, I got sick and I had to spend the whole year inside. Eventually I overcame the sickness and continued to deal with the expectations of my parents. And eventually my mom, who desperately wanted me to achieve her dreams, fell sick herself and died. Ironically, only after this did I become successful. I became a world renowned painter. Eventually this all culminated with me dying of old age and describing my life to a spiritual wolf that was guiding my soul into the afterlife. I had grown major resentment with my mother for the way she forced me to pursue her dream, so I was as blunt as possible regarding my early life. I told the wolf I had grown up as a lonely, isolated kid who didn't very much like his childhood and went through my successes and failures of my later life. Except, I didn't have those successes and failures. Why well, didn't become a great artist? The game took me back through scenes and pieced together things that went unnoticed. When I was sick at 11 years old, I became bedridden with an intense sickness that I just couldn't get better from. I became infuriated at the world, and in order to help, my mom convinced me to pick up random skills. I drew pictures, and as my sickness worsened, my mom got me a typewriter to pick up the skill of writing, so I began to write the story of my life. Now the game absolutely played me, okay? And it used the options I picked when describing my life to this spirit wolf to write the story of my life. After gaining resentment for my mom in my later life, I found it easy to critique my mother when talking to the spirit wolf. So what I wrote as a sick 11 year old absolutely disgusted me. But to make matters absolutely worse, my mom found my story and was shocked by what it said. After confronting me about it, she takes it and rewrites it, reassuring me the life I lived was amazing because I was the one who lived it. And eventually she tells me it's okay. It's okay to give up and end the suffering. It was okay to close my eyes. Now, this story hit me hard. Having a family member battling terminal sickness, it hit me harder than any story ever had. I never expected so much creativity and uniqueness to be spawned from a non-AAA game. I never knew a game could take this much risk with its control scheme and story and create an unrivaled immersive experience and leave such an impact on a person. But as the credits rolled, it all suddenly made sense to me. The reason I played those large AAA games was all within before your eyes. No, not the dying part, but the gameplay aspect of it. Through the entirety before your eyes, I had made it my goal to try and see the end of every scene I was presented with. And even though sometimes I horribly failed, let's try this again. I was searching for more information, more story, more guidance on what to do next. Whenever I play these AAA games, it's like I'm searching for that nostalgic feeling again. I'm desperately not wanting to blink, to have the feeling of youthful happiness leave me. No matter how hard I try to keep my eyes open to hang on to that feeling, it always leaves. And the only reason I continued to play those games was for the feeling those games gave me all those years ago. And I incorrectly assumed that if I played these games long enough, I would always feel that feeling again. After this epiphany of mine, I had been opened up to the limitless world of indie games. And for a solid two weeks straight, I religiously only played indie games. It was the most fun I'd had in years. Usually I would just scroll on my phone listening to some brain rot version of Cotton Eye Joe on repeat. But this one decision opened up a whole world of fun for me. To name a few, I tried Helldivers and was greeted with one of the most fun multiplayer experiences I've ever played. This cooperative experience was more rewarding than any Halo installment or Destiny activity I played over the last 10 years. I journeyed through Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, where you control one character with the left side of your controller and another with the right side of your controller. And let me tell you, anytime they went on opposite sides, my IQ went to Asmund Gold levels. This game took risk in its control scheme, just like Before Your Eyes, and I loved it. Content warning was a great time to spend with my friends and emphasize the possibilities when a goal of a game is directly linked with socialization and fun. Now when I say you should move on from AAA games, I don't mean you should never play them again. What I do mean is you shouldn't expect these games to be comparable to the ones you fell in love with years ago. Those games are gone. It's alright to continue and enjoy these games, but if you're solely playing them to have that experience that you loved back then, you're gonna be disappointed.
I will always love those games I grew up with. Those blinks of excitement will always stick with me. I'll always remember my first night with Xbox Live playing Halo Reach. I'll always remember the friends I made, Darian, Nestor, and Phantom, even though I lost touch with them years ago. I'll always remember losing every game I played in Madden to those same friends. I'll remember closing my door to make sure my mom didn't hear me yell at the screen playing Modern Warfare 2. I'll remember my first raid in World of Warcraft, and my first Nightfall Strike in Destiny. Yet as time passed, those blinks of euphoria became echoes. Those games are in the past. The feelings I resonate with these types of games are gone. I can keep my eyes open for a little longer in the desperate attempt to feel those sensations again, continuing to play the franchises that I used to love but don't anymore. Or I can realize. Those types of games have their time. Those types of games have their spotlight. But now, they've turned into something completely different than my perception of them years ago. And that's okay. No king rules forever. And yeah, something new is scary. But think of the experiences you are robbed of from standing your ground on change. I hated that change. But now, I'm starting to think it's not so bad. I know many of you feel this way. Or maybe not exactly the same, but at the very least, similar. I didn't know the feeling I desperately wanted to feel again after all these years was behind the most daunting decision of my gaming life. To shut my eyes on the dream that the games I loved years ago would eventually give me the same feelings again. But after I made that leap, I realized the place I ended up was a whole lot better than the one I was dreaming for. So trust me, make that leap to games that care about your experience, that care for the amount of fun you're having, that desperately want to revive that old feeling you got in your chest all those years ago. It's alright to decline the hope that AAA companies bank on you having, to leap past their blinding gaze, to separate yourself from their vision. So take that leap of faith into the dark, because in the dark, we often find the brightest of lights. And when you leap past the nostalgic gaze of AAA games and into the shadowy unknown of indie games, just remember. So when he knew he was going to go, he was okay. Because he'd already lived a great life, a full life. And he was everything he needed to be. It's okay. <laughs> She's gonna let you in. To close your eyes. Go on. You know what to do. Why is he smiling like that? He must be somewhere that he likes.